Hypnosis Today, the nation's first web TV talk show that explores the fascinating world of hypnotherapy. Hello, my name is Lisa Mackenberg, and I'll be your host, covering a wide variety of topics uh, to help you understand the power of the subconscious mind and how hypnosis is being used today to help people achieve success, happiness, and prosperity. Well, I am very happy to introduce to you my two first guests. Well, my first guest is Susanna, and let me make sure I pronounce this right, Susanna Hutera. Yes. And Susanna is an honors graduate of HMI College of Hypnotherapy. She is also an RN in the greater Los Angeles area. And she has as her very special guest, Joanne. Now, Joanne came in to see Susanna for weight loss. Please help me welcome my guests. <laughs> Joanne, mm -hmm. I'd like to start with you. When you were taking a look at uh, wanting to lose some weight, why come see a hypnotherapist? I thought it would work. It would be better than me trying to do it on my own. Had you tried anything else before you pursued hypnotherapy? Um, I lost a little bit of weight, but I, you know, I had a lot of other things I wanted to go through. It was maybe it was rooted in the past and just weight loss. Sure. So how did you find Susanna? Oh, I work with her. Excellent. And you work with her. Um, I know that you're an RN, and you found out she was also doing hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about a little bit about your experience uh, coming into her office with hypnosis? It was very relaxing and wonderful and very soothing. It just helped me sleep also. Oh, I used wow. to have a sleep problem. Wow. So when you're dealing with weight loss, uh, Susanna, what kind of inductions do you use? I like to use different induction for each client for every session, but one of my favorite ones that I like to use for weight loss or any other uh, therapy that I'm using, um, I invented by myself. I have a client actually to pick number anywhere between 1 to 100. It's an odd that. number. I could ask you right there, did you pick a number between 1 and 100? I don't remember no, what number it was, but I did pick a number. Okay, so I wonder if it had significance. Did the number, do you think the number has significance, whatever the client chooses? I don't really think, I usually say, don't think about it, just pick the number. Uh -huh. it so just it let, it, let it be odd number, and that's, that's the reason. Because uh -huh. when they have to, after that, they have to out loud count back in odd number, 65, for example, if that's the first number, 63, 61. It's a little more difficult than to go um, in different order. So, you know, we create an overload, and at the moment they feel they don't want to count anymore or they are tired enough to close the eyes and go into nice hypnotic sleep. That's when induction is done and we go into work in hypnosis. I, I think that I would be very overloaded doing that because that's not an easy task. And so that would build message units very, very fast. What did it feel like for you going into the hypnotic trance? Well, I knew what was going on, but I felt so much better when I came out of it. It was, it was like I had a good rest, a peaceful rest. Beautiful. And what was your goal? How much weight did you want to lose? Well, I'm not done yet. So, uh, how much can you tell us how much I've weight lost you've lost? 23 pounds. Wow, using hypnosis. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what methods you used? I like to use different methods, always tailor it for a specific client, for specific needs. Mm -hmm. um, different methods, I use NLP, neuro linguistic programming, or I use a lot of imagery. I, I love very much to use imagery, and Joanne is imagery friendly, so it was very easy. Is it easier for you to visualize? Oh, yes. Okay, yeah, so that would be a good modality. Can you teach us one that you like to use? Of course, the one we use, and I like it to use all the time. It's uh, called uh, discovery process. Mm -hmm. When in hypnosis, I have my client to create the image of the problem we are working with, for example, excessive weight or pain or anything else, and then through discovery process, which uh, client observe first the image of the problem, uh, then we try to get any senses, feeling, touch, taste, anything else, to try to understand what's going on. And then once we go through this simple process, we go further. We talk to image that creates the problem. We ask image, what is it? Uh, how you feel? What would you like us to do? Why are you there? What can we do to turn it around, to change it? And at some point, if client is okay, if client likes to proceed, client can become an image to get the actual sensation and feeling how it is. And at the end, client takes all the learning and discoveries and understanding of the problem. Why is it there? Why it was created? What we can do to make it better? Takes into conscious cognitive life. You know, 
that's so beautiful and it related to something that Joanne said that as she was pursuing what options she had to lose the weight she wanted to lose, she thought it might be something in the subconscious or in the past. Mm -hmm. During this discovery process, what did you discover? It was in the past. Yeah. Can you share with us what was going on? Um, well, I was uh, molested as a child. And, and so yeah. when you discovered it? Well, I knew, I knew. It just, it's always been in here. Uh, yeah. So what kind of things did you do to help Joanne be able to let go of the thing that was trapped in yeah, here? Yeah, it's always been here. The pain's always been in here. Yes. It's not there anymore. Oh. I'm not the victim. I ain't never thought I was a victim, but I'm not the victim anymore. That must have been very liberating or freeing. Mm -hmm. And if we take a look at the metaphors, we can hear a lot about letting go and then letting go of the weight. Once we had the discovery process, which was something that you knew but you were holding on to, how were you able to help someone let something like that? That's so profound. And thank you so much for sharing that with us, that it truly is an honor. Thank you. How do you help someone let go of something that is profound and um, deep as that? Very important for my client is to recognize and, and to understand what is going on. And once we are on that path, the client knows and um, can say, yes, this is the problem. This is where it's coming from. And we acknowledge that that's the point where we can start working with it, to make a peace with it, to forgive. That's very important, to forgive to ourselves, to client first, mm -hmm. and then to the others. So through forgiveness, through mm -hmm. um, guardians, we used uh, guardians and imagery process. Uh, that help us to go through this process of forgiveness and finding the peace and many other techniques, especially it, it is a lot about finding peace, forgive, and like you said, letting go. So was there a change in the way that you were eating or the way that you looked at life or the way that you were using activity or movement that facilitated this? I enjoyed my food. I didn't scarf it down. So you were able to yeah. actually enjoy your I food? I stopped having headaches. I stop worrying. I just let life come as it as it will. So you got so much other benefit besides mm -hmm. just the. And that's a lot of weight. It's twenty three pounds. And well, tell me about your sleep. What was that like? What did it used to be like? And what is it like now? Well, I used to get up in the middle of the night, and you know it was like I couldn't go to sleep. I was afraid I was going to miss something. That was what my mind was. You know, I didn't like sleeping. So I'd sleep three, four hours a day and, and you know, get up at five in the morning and go to work and uh -huh. you know, be tired all the time and cranky. And I'm a happy person, but I want to be really happy. I don't want it to be fake. I don't want it to be a front. So it yeah. feels much more authentic, mm -hmm. the happiness. How many hours are you sleeping now? Uh, between eight and ten hours. How are you feeling in the late afternoons? Fine. Fine. I love it. And did you, we, you talked about enjoying your food more talked about resting, enjoying life more. Did you give uh, Joanne any anchors that she can use during the day whenever any kind of feelings come up? Oh, yes. We created a few different anchors. This is my anchor right here. <laughs> can, can you show me? That's my anchor. And when you trigger your anchor, tell me what happens with you. I feel really good on? inside. <laughs> I feel like there's electricity, positive electricity. And did you use that as an anchor in hypnosis and then she can access it in a full waking state? <laughs> yes, state? as an LP technique we created in hypnosis. And so it feels like electricity. Mm -hmm. Can you describe more about what hypnosis felt like for you? Well, it, it, I, I, it's, it's hard to describe. It's just wonderful. I feel really positive and good and I have more patience and I, you know, I don't have to think so hard to say something. I, I, I feel free that I can talk and... And, and just be myself and be happy with myself. So you found your voice too. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people out there who have misconceptions or don't really understand what hypnosis is. Were you afraid at all when you heard about hypnotherapy? No, because I know Zuzi. I'm not afraid. No, I know her for a while, so it helped. See, some people um, are interested in hypnotherapy and then they find a hypnotherapist. Some people know the hypnotherapist, and then they become really receptive to hypnotherapy. What would you say to someone who felt like something that they knew about was trapped, and they wanted to let it go about pursuing hypnotherapy? 
I tell them, go, go and do it. Because it's not just that one thing you think is wrong with you. There's other things. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just you trying to deal with whatever was behind you. You know, you can let it go. So it helps you be more present mm -hmm. and to enjoy life more. Yes. Tell me what kind of plans you have for the future. You said you wanted to lose some more weight. Um, what else is it that you'd like to pursue with or without hypnotherapy? Well, I just, I just want to enjoy life and enjoy my boys, and I have a new dog, and, and, and just, you know, make new friends and uh -huh. feel confident and enjoy my family and my husband and, and just and, and, and not be sad. I, I don't, I'm not sad anymore. To be able yeah. to release that feeling. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I know that Zuzanna will be part of your journey. Mm -hmm. You know, Zuzanna, so many people are going to want to learn your wonderful techniques of discovery, letting go of negativity in the past, discovery journeys, angel journeys, neurolinguistic programming, and all of your unique inductions that you designed yourself, custom designed for your clients. And everybody can reach Zuzanna Hutera on hmigrads.com. Well, we're going to take a short break, but please stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to meet another HMI graduate and meet her client as well. Please stay tuned. There's a lot more coming up for you on hypnosis today. Welcome to hypnosis today the nation's first web TV talk show that explores the fascinating world of hypnotherapy. Hello, my name is Lisa Mackenberg and I'll be your host covering a wide <laughs> guests. Well, my first guest is Susanna, and let me make sure I pronounce this right, Susanna Hutera. Yes. And Susanna is an honors graduate of HMI College of Hypnotherapy. She is also an RN in the greater Los Angeles area. And she has as her very special guest, Joanne. Now, Joanne came in to see Susanna for weight loss. Please help me welcome my guests. <laughs> Joanne, mm -hmm. a variety of topics uh, to help you understand the power of the subconscious mind and how hypnosis is being used today to help people achieve success, happiness, and prosperity. Well, I am very happy to introduce to you my two first